Trump campaign is now reaching voters online. You are seeing the president of the United States. Look at the lines. You join our movement. A lot of uh, President Trump supporters here. Greatest movement in the history of our country. The most racist thing a person could tell me is that I'm supposed to choose something based on my race. You ain't black. Joe Biden has never been a friend to African Americans. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of what we call Truth Over Facts. China lied to us. They destroyed test kits. They lied to their own people. There, since Ronald Reagan, we haven't had a president more engaged and more involved in the Western Hemisphere than this administration, and it's been a great partnership to work with them on. Well, you've heard of The View, but welcome to The Right View. And with us today is the Motor City Madman, Ted Nugent, because this isn't your typical political show. It's the most important election in our lifetime. Joe Biden, who has a dismal record of economic failure and absolutely terrible ideas for the future. Oh, uh oh, I'm in trouble. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. We will make America great again. those people here, they fought against the communists. And now I'm going to fight for Trump. We are one group, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the of the newest coalition, Asian Pacific Americans for Trump. I'm Laura Trump, senior advisor to President Trump's re-election campaign. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce Elaine L. Chow. History already knows her as the former U.S. Secretary of Labor, the first Asian American woman in our country's history to be appointed to the president's cabinet. An immigrant who arrived in America at the age of eight, speaking no English, received her citizenship at the age of 19, has a distinguished career in the public, private, nonprofit sectors. She was president and CEO of United Way of America, director of the Peace Corps, deputy secretary of transportation. She was also vice president of Bank of America and Citibank. She received her MBA from the Harvard Business School and is the recipient of 37 honorary doctorate degrees. I feel like I need to go back to school right now. She's been a tremendous advocate for the Asian Pacific American community. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Now, during his State of the Union address earlier this year, President Trump famously said, socialism destroys nations. But always remember, freedom unifies the soul. Throughout his time in office, President Trump has boldly safeguarded Americans' precious liberties. Why is safeguarding freedom and democracy so important to the Asian Pacific community? And why do you believe President Trump and the Republican Party reflect Asian Pacific Americans' values? Because freedom and democracy spells opportunity. And Asian Pacific Americans are the one group that has the largest number of immigrants. And so 62% of Asian Americans were born elsewhere. And we came to this country seeking opportunity. And we wanna make sure that everyone, regardless of their background, has an equal access to opportunity in our country. And that opportunity can only exist if we have a government that believes in the triumph of the individual, uh, you know, of the individual soul. So we are not uh, part of some big category of people. We're individuals with individual dreams. And the Republican Party is all about individualism. And it's about freedom and democracy, which once again spells opportunity and the American dream. And that is so important. 
to Asian Pacific Americans in particular. And in contrast, Joe Biden and the Democrats have pivoted so far to the left that he has openly embraced socialism and will fundamentally change America as we know it. Asian Pacific Americans know all too well the many dangers to, uh, of socialism, which leads to the destruction of families and communities and opportunity. Could you discuss how Joe Biden's and Democrats' socialist policies have discouraged Asian Pacific Americans away from supporting the Democrats? And maybe share with us why socialism is so antithetical to the Asian Pacific American community. Number one, we're very family oriented. We're very achievement oriented. We're aspirational. And we want our children to go to the best universities in America. And right now, there are social policies within university across America that basically discriminate against Asian Pacific Americans. And what we want is we want the opportunity to compete on a level playing field on the basis of merit. And socialism is something that so many young people may think is really glamorous, but they don't really understand what that means. Um, socialism doesn't cater to the American spirit of entrepreneurialism of freedom and of opportunity. And for a lot of young people who think that somehow, you know, socialism is going to provide everything for free, well, as Martha Thatcher once famously said, socialism works great until you run out of other people's money. <laughs> That's right. And so it's really important that we do more to educate others about the tremendous merits of the free enterprise system which has brought this country and everywhere else in the world such heightened standard of living. And so this is a election of great consequence. It really is a battle between socialism and the free enterprise uh, system. And you know, for everyone who cares about opportunity, we want to have opportunity in a free society under a freedom uh, under a free enterprise system. Yeah, it's so so important and it is. I mean, it is what makes America America and what makes our country so great. So enjoyed having you with us tonight. Uh, what message would you like to leave the American people with this evening? We have a great country. Our country is exceptional and no other country in the world offers the kind of opportunity that we have in this country. And this election will be very important in preserving the America that we know and love. Yep, it's why we are all fighting every single day, all the way up till November 3rd, fighting for every vote and every single American has to come out and vote for Donald Trump. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Uh, we will take a quick break, be right back with you with more Asian Pacific Americans for Trump. Stay right there. This is Brad Parscale, President Trump's campaign manager. Without a doubt, 2020 will be the most important election of the history of our great nation. America has come too far in the last four years to give up now and let the Democrats undo all of our incredible progress. Don't listen to the fake news media. They said we had no chance in 2016, and they're saying it again now. The future of our nation depends on you. The only way to ensure victory and keep America great is to get out and vote. Use the link below to make sure that you're registered to vote. A bull in a china shop, changing Washington. It takes a Donald Trump to demand truth from China. Shut down foreign travel. Get ventilators and tests now. Raise unemployment benefits. Cash relief to families. Washington's come to that. President Trump's not always polite. Mr. Nice Guy won't cut it. He does it his way, not the Washington way. But Donald Trump gets it done. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Welcome back to Team Trump Online. I'm Laura Trump. Now it's time to bring in two individuals who are reshaping American politics. 
Kimberly Yi, Arizona State Treasurer, and Sean Reyes, a Utah Attorney General. Thank you both so much for being with us tonight. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Laura. Always great to be with you. Oh, thanks, guys. All right, we know how important family is to the Asian Pacific American community. President Trump has been the most pro-family president in American history. Since taking office, President Trump has worked tirelessly to promote policies that strengthen American families. Uh, Sean, can you talk about how important family-friendly policies are to Asian Pacific Americans? Sure, Laura. Family means everything to us. Providing for our families, protecting them, it's always family first. Now, Asian Pacific Americans, we're pretty diverse. I'm diverse. I have Native Hawaiian, Japanese, Filipino, Chinese, and more, and that's just what I'm aware of. <laughs> APAs represent over 50 different ethnicities, and we don't agree on everything. But one thing all APAs have in common, the thing that ties us together, is the focus on family. Whether you're fifth generation or first, it's why APAs work so hard, study so hard, pray so hard, sacrifice so much for their families, for their children to have opportunities that they didn't. It's my family stories and Kimberly's too. Any policies that protect and strengthen the family they're embraced by our community and not just economic ones, but protecting life, the American dream, yeah. the law. It's why Republican values align so well with APA values, Laura. Wow, fantastic. Well, I want to shift the conversation for a moment to discuss President Trump's bold leadership in response to the coronavirus pandemic. From the beginning, President Trump has ensured the health and safety of all Americans. At the same time, President Trump has also provided direct economic relief to American families, workers, and businesses throughout the coronavirus outbreak. A key component of the CARES Act was the inclusion of the Paycheck Protection Program. We know at least 30 million jobs were supported or saved because of the Paycheck Protection Program. Kimberly and Sean, how has this program delivered for small businesses in the states of Arizona and Utah and specifically helped the lives of Asian Pacific Americans? Kimberly, we'll start with you. Sure. Well, first, I believe that President Trump is in the presidency in this critical time for such a time as this. And we have seen his leadership, his bold leadership, protect all of these small businesses across our great nation. So many of those small businesses are owned by the Asian American community. And so we have in Arizona greatly benefited from the Paycheck Protection Program. And that has allowed so many of these Asian American families to stay afloat during this critical time, protect their employees, and be able to come back more quickly in their reopening. Arizona was in a very strong economic position before before all of this happened. And in fact, going into 2020, Arizona was the third best economy in the country. Last year, we had the second highest personal income growth in the nation. So we know that with uh, President Trump's great, bold leadership and standing up for small businesses out there, we're going to do just fine when we come back into business. All right, Sean, what are you seeing in Utah? Similar, Utah's greatly benefited, Laura like the rest of America from the PPP. I've heard it directly from many small businesses in my state, and I used to help run a venture fund, so I know what access to capital means, especially in a crisis. The Paycheck Protection Program uh, provided eight weeks of cash flow, a forgivable loan, and the loan's retroactive, bringing workers back. It's innovative, it's historic, vintage President Trump looking out for small businesses, so many of which are owned by APAs. Fantastic. Well, thank goodness for President Trump uh, looking out for all of us out there. Now to turn to what we all know. The 2020 election will be one of the most, if not the most, consequential election in American history. The person who emerges victorious on November 3rd will have the enormous job of firing up the American economy again and holding communist China accountable for their role in the coronavirus outbreak. Kimberly, why is President Trump the only choice, the only person who can make the American economy great again? President Trump is the only choice to make America great again, and his economic policies are so clearly defined. It is uh, so clear that with uh, his leadership and the 
protecting our businesses out there, whether they be small or medium or large, he's got our back. And so many of our APA communities are small business owners. And so we need to know that, that we will continue to have that protection for the next four years. That's why I'm supporting President Trump, because he has a strong record on supporting businesses. Remember, he was the one who signed the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And Asian Americans are the largest beneficiary of this tax cut. They get about $2,500 for each of these uh, cuts. And so we know that this works and Asian American families have been preserved in their businesses. They are successful and they're going to come out of this pandemic with great, great successes with the bold leadership of Pre President Trump and his economic policies. We also acknowledge that so many of these Asian American families and their businesses have made America great in its economy. And so we acknowledge that and we want to help them continue to pursue their dreams. And I believe that we will be coming out of this very quickly and our economy will be stronger than ever. I, I agree with you there. And it's so interesting, $2,500 per person, thanks to the uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. I thought the Democrats said that that was all fake. Wait a minute. Oh my gosh, they're the worst. So many people in this country benefited from that. It's amazing. And keep in mind, Joe Biden has been on the record saying that one of the first things that he will do as the new president will cut the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act as yep. one of the first official duties. So that's a yep. sad story. Yeah, your taxes are going up if, if uh, Sleepy Joe gets in there. But I don't. he was running for Senate last I heard, so maybe we're okay. <laughs> Um, Asian Pacific Americans are one of the fastest growing populations in the country. Sean, how critical of a role will Asian Pacific Americans play in deciding the 2020 election? And why is President Trump the clear choice for the Asian Pacific community? Laura, without doubt, Asian Pacific Americans will play a significant role in 2020. APAs are the fastest growing minority electorate group. More than 11 million will be able to vote. That's 5% of the nation's eligible voters. We just have to make sure that as many APAs as possible are voting for President Trump. And why? He respects the successes of our community, the drive, the ambition. He's appointed APAs to his cabinet, like White House staff, judgeships, other prominent positions, uh, others, FCC Commissioner Ajit Pai, former Ambassador Nikki Haley, and I could go on and on and on. But President Trump, as you mentioned already, grew the hottest economy ever in the world before COVID, in our history. Now we all need him to do it again. He's strong on issues we care about as APAs, education, protecting families, national security, and the military, cutting taxes, self-reliance, immigration, trade, the rule of law, APAs appreciate leaders like President Trump who keep their promises and get things done. Yeah, promise made, promise kept. It's President Absolutely. Donald Trump's way. Many Chinese Americans fled the communist grip of China to find freedom in America. Their stories are heart-wrenching. They understand the importance of standing up against communist China. Joe Biden, on the other hand, has never stood up to China, and he never will. In fact, he's been aligned with China his entire career, and his family has benefited heavily from it. How disastrous would Joe Biden be in dealing with China, and why is this so important to Asian Pacific Americans specifically? Kimberly, we'll come to you first. Joe Biden is weak on China. There's no question on that. And we can't trust him on U.S. foreign relations with China. We know that he has family business ties, so we follow the money. We also know that he is a Washington, D.C. establishment. He's the status quo. And for so many years, they have turned a blind eye and a deaf ear to the many problems that China has had. They are not fair players. We know this. And for so many years, this has gone on and on. And all of a sudden, Joe Biden comes out and says, he's going to care about it. Well, he's got a record that shows he hasn't. And so I believe that, you know, China needs to clean up their act and President Donald Trump will make sure that they do that. They have manipulated currency. They have theft in intellectual property and they violate human rights. Only Donald Trump can get that job done. We've already seen him start that process and no one else can do that. We need to make sure Joe Biden stays right where he is in the basement, right? Sean, That's what do you right. think? Yeah. I'll try to be brief, uh, Laura. Joe Biden can't decide if he likes China or not. Or That's maybe, right. Maybe he just can't remember. 
I'm, I'm also, by the way, waiting for him to make another discriminatory remark saying, I ain't an APA because I'm supporting President Trump. Here's, the thing. Here's the thing with Joe Biden. He has no coherent strategy for China. President Trump, in stark contrast, has successfully leveraged concessions in trade, drug policy, security, and shown China that we just will not back down. Yeah, in fact, President Trump has been talking about China for decades now and saying that something needs to be done about them. You contrast that with Joe Biden, who we all know the story, whose son flew over to China while he was vice president with him on Air Force Two and somehow got a billion and a half dollar investment from the Bank of China, which is run by the Chinese government. You tell me, what did they want for that money? We still don't know. Uh, President Trump has delivered record-breaking results for the American people, specifically Asian Pacific Americans. Sean, you have knowledge of the technology companies in Utah's Silicon Slopes, which employ many Asian Pacific Americans. How would a Joe Biden presidency rescind all of the progress made in the last three and a half years and set back millions of Asian Pacific Americans? Laura. I was general counsel for a tech company. I invested in and helped run tech companies. And so the thought of Joe Biden as president, while harrowing on many levels, is even more so when it comes to innovation. Much like his non-existent China policy, he has no technology policy either. He doesn't know the blockchain from a bike chain. Regardless of your party, regardless of where you stand, if you're a technology leader, you should be afraid. President Trump, on the other hand, has balanced innovation and privacy protection, data protection, without heavy-handed government interference, making sure that the government is protecting APAs while still allowing the free market to create millions of jobs, generate billions more in revenue, and give millions of APAs the opportunity to succeed and have the quality of life that they deserve. Oh, amazing. All right. Well, I want to say thank you so much to both of you, Kimberly and Sean. It's been a uh, true pleasure to have you both on. I want to give you both an opportunity to share some final thoughts with the American people. Kimberly, you first. Well, thank you so much for having me on. And really, it is such a wonderful honor to have the president and his administration honor the month of May as APA Heritage Month and to also kick off this wonderful coalition so that we can send the message of the great successes that the APA community has had in this great country because of the freedom and opportunity and prosperity that our wonderful country offers. And it's a clear choice for me. I am going to be supporting President Trump because he has a strong record to continue to keep our country great. This is what these families came here for, for so many generations. And if we uh, were to elect someone like a liberal Joe Biden, all of those freedoms would go away. And it would be a sad uh, state of our country. And we would have leftist socialist policies across the states. We would also see taxpayer funded abortions. We would see universal health care for illegal immigrants. I mean, the list goes on. So I am looking forward to using the rest of this year through November to help reelect Donald Trump for president. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much for that. And Sean, Last thoughts. Sure. I'm a proud Asian Pacific Islander and the son of noble cultures, strong, melded with the greatest nation in the history of our world here in America. It is a tremendous birthright. It's a wonderful legacy. And I want to talk for just a second, Laura, about President Trump. I know the real Donald Trump like you do, not the one the media loves to portray and lampoon. I know the real one who praise for us. I know the real one who prizes patriotism and family above all else. I know the one who, when the cameras were off <clears throat> and no one was watching, asked me how my father was doing because he knew he had cancer. He gave me a signing pen to give to my dad, the same one that my dad recently had when he passed. At his bedside, his Bible and his Trump pen. President Trump has the best interests of APAs and all Americans at heart. And that's why I'm voting for him and asking each of you out there to vote for him as well. I want to get the APA community fired up and excited to reelect Donald Trump. Oh, wow. What a touching story. Well, we are sorry to hear about your dad, but uh, 
Thank you for the insight into our president. I do know him like you do, and you're right. I wish more people saw that side of him. So, Kimberly and Sean, thank you so much for being with us tonight, and thank you all for spending your night with us as well. All right, I want to thank our special guests, Elaine Chow, Kimberly Yee, and Sean Reyes for joining us tonight, and a special thanks to all of you, our incredible patriots at home, for tuning in. We'll see you all next time.